everyone. This is Neil Estrada with Bankers Funding, a Wells Fargo home mortgage affiliate. I'm on the phone with Edwin Balloyer, Prudential California Realty. Edwin's a certified short sale professional and is commonly known in his marketplace and within the real estate profession as the authority when it comes to foreclosures in real estate. So for those of you who've missed payments on your mortgage or are having some difficulty, Edwin will have some great tips on modifying your mortgage without having to hire a third-party company. Also, I'll have some great info for avoiding scams, having a backup plan in place, just in case you're denied a modification. So, Edwin, thanks for being on this call for the homeowners. Hey, thanks for thanks for having me on the call. No problem. In regards to bar, uh, borrowers who are having trouble with their mortgage payment, do you expect more of the same from banks in 2010, or do you expect it to be different this time around? You know, we all heard the story of the boy who cried wolf, and I remember in 2009, there were some homeowners that I would talk to where they haven't made a mortgage payment in over a year, and the lender still didn't foreclose because there were so many moratoriums going on back then. And what I think that's done for 2010, it's really lulled a lot of the borrowers to sleep. And starting January, I'm really seeing more lenders move forward with foreclosure. Even when a short sale or loan modification is in progress, the bank's still moving forward with foreclosure. So you mean to tell me that lenders are repossessing homes without warning? Is that legal? Technically, if the lender has already filed what's called a notice of trustee sale and they postpone it, they, they really don't have to reissue another one and notify the borrower. So this is really how a lot of the homeowners are unsuspect, uh, really just losing their house to foreclosure and their short sale agent doesn't know about it. In some cases, if they're trying for a loan mod, it, it really happens at, at their surprise. So can this happen if a homeowner hired a negotiation company? From what I'm seeing out there, it's actually the majority. Wow. How is that possible? I mean, I thought they were supposed to be the experts. You know, we, we have to be careful when we define expert as a real estate agent. I, really can't believe how many times I'm solicited for these get-rich-quick half-hour seminars teaching us to do loan mods. Now, on common sense tells me it's, not, it's going to take me more than half an hour to really manage someone's most important asset. And when it comes down, it's really your decision if you want to pay someone thousands of dollars to negotiate a modification. And even if you do, at least know, at a minimum, uh, when your house is up for auction. So you're saying whether or not you hire someone to negotiate on your behalf, you need to learn how to look up your own auction status? Absolutely. Is this easy to do? Sometimes it is. The problem is many homeowners throw away what's called their notice of trustee sale. That's that sometimes two-page piece of paper that goes on your door when you're about 30 days away from your auction. Homeowners get frustrated. They throw it away, or sometimes it contains real scary language. So they really just don't hang on to it. This is one of the things that we help them out with at our free workshop. Hmm, okay, okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, so who should be attending this workshop? Do you have to be far along in the modification process at all? Well, actually, you could be at any stage, or if you haven't even started the process, that's fine, too. So that really applies to anyone who's been denied, in, uh, denied a loan modification, someone who currently has an application for a modification, if you're just exploring your options, and even if you've tried a short sale and you've taken your house off the market because you simply just changed your mind, the dates should be displayed on your screen for for the for the workshop. And we're, our first release, we're going to have a Thursday and a Saturday morning. That way, it's flexible for homeowners. Right, uh, Edwin. Some of our friends listening on the call have actually attended one of the foreclosure buying seminars that we've held together in the past. And for those events, it was pretty obvious. I mean, our motive was to gain clients looking for a good deal, of course. And that was when there was a bunch of bank-owned uh, properties uh, on the market. So Yeah, boy, is that time to change, huh? Right, I know. So, I mean, what's your motive behind holding a free workshop for homeowners this time around? You know, as, a, as an active agent in North Orange County, I'm seeing a lot of homeowners that are either scammed or put in the hands of an amateur. And... When I'm prospecting, this is something I'm really doing every day. I'm calling up sellers, and they're telling me about the horror stories that their last agent had put them through. I have one, one conversation stands out where there was, there was this homeowner where she 
she happened to have a relative she hired as a short sale agent, and that relative was charging her $1,000 every time that he postponed the auction for the house. And he, he was pretty much telling her that they were legal fees that had to be paid to the state. And in all honesty, he was probably, po- he, of course, he was pocketing all that money. Mm. So I'm sure you've seen this in the loan business as well, where people are learning the business at a client's expense, right? Right. Yeah, it's really sad because, you know, people always ask me, how can we have so many crummy real estate agents and, and loan officers out there? And my answer has always been that the quality of the agent will always be as high as your standards. After seeing all this nonsense, I thought to myself, at a minimum, I need to warn homeowners of the common scams that are out there and keep them in their home longer, regardless of who they've hired. In return, they'll end up referring their friends and their family to me. And also, since less than 50% of, of the loan modifications that are being applied for these days Since a lot of them end up getting denied, a lot of them are going to have to end up either doing a short sale or foreclosure. So less than half the people who apply for a modification are turned down? Wow. How can a homeowner increase their chances? Well, of course, they're going to need to attend my free workshop. You like that plug, right? Secondly, they need to keep in mind that they need to qualify for a loan all over again when they're doing a loan mod. This means that there are certain debt-to-income ratios, that the banks want to see. Too many borrowers think that they have to to exaggerate their hardship when it's actually the opposite. You really have to qualify for these loans. You have a financial worksheet and just about every single bank makes you fill out one. Make sure you fill it out accurately. If your gas bill is only 25 bucks a month, don't write in $100. You're digging yourself in a deeper hole. I have a lot of other tips on my website as well. You could go to www.wheresmyequity.com. <laughs> nice website name. Okay, so let's just say a homeowner tried for a modification and got denied. Uh, what happens then? In some cases, they'll actually will just want to try again under a different program. There's Hope for Homeowners. There's, there's uh, some of the other programs that are out there that banks might have in-house. Each program, whether it's government-sponsored or not, has their own qualifying guidelines. And if all else fails, you want to explore the possibility of selling the house as a short sale. Okay. So I've been hearing that a homeowner is better off just walking because you'll receive cash to move out. Yeah, that's the old, that's the old cash for keys that, that some sometimes the banks offer. You know, it's never guaranteed. And when it comes down to it, you're going to, you're, you're going to get maybe a couple of thousand bucks. So let me ask you this. If your rent was going to cost you, let's say, $3,000 a month and short sale, you're able to stay in the house four additional months, that's equal to $12,000. Right. And no lender is going to give you $12,000 you know, as far as cash for keys go. As far as I know, nope. But, um, <laughs> yeah, won't the bank go after you, though, for the difference in a short sale? Some people think if you foreclose, it'll, it'll, it'll pretty much wipe out that that liability that you have on it? And the answer is, if you have a recourse loan, foreclosing doesn't let you off the hook either. So what I try to do is, if if I obtain a a short sale, I make sure that the language in the short sale approval letter states that the bank won't go after you. So if you, you close that short sale successfully, you don't have to worry about what's called a deficiency judgment. Right, true. So... I mean, in your opinion, or from what you know, should a homeowner even allow their loan mod servicer to do a short sale if they've already been denied for their loan mod? One way to look at the whole picture is this. They've already failed you once. They promised you that they'd be able to modify your loan, and they haven't. Does that make them deserve another shot? Now, I'm always disappointed when I see listings taken by some of these outfits. And I can't believe you the stories. You won't believe the stories that I have to tell about them. Listings are filled out wrong, combination lockboxes, and never returning phone calls. You definitely want to put your short sale in the hands of a real estate professional. Absolutely. So, Edwin, thanks so much for doing this interview and providing some great and valuable information. Uh, So, guys, if you're out there currently waiting on your modification decision, just considering some options, or even if you have an auction date just a few weeks away, you definitely want to attend Edwin's workshop.